Well, I am so blessed to be here to serve you, and our pastor's been going through a series called The Royal. He'll start again next week as we learn about studying God's Word, and I want to give you a perspective of what you hold here in, in the Word of God. You realize to have the Bible in your own language, having it written in English, uh, people like Wycliffe and Tyndale, they were translating the Bible into our language and it got so much uh, attack. Literally, they were burned alive for that feat, uh, for trying to put the scriptures into the hand of God's people. Uh, Wycliffe himself was captured. They strangled him, and before he died, they burned him slowly, roasted him alive. His dedication that we could have the scriptures and sometimes we, we just kind of take for granted, you know. We put us, oh, I don't feel like reading today. When people died, that we would be able for ourselves not to have to go through religious leaders, but can read for ourselves. Uh, years ago, as I've shared before, my, my mom passed away from cancer when I was about 12. My sister, a few years later, was killed in a car accident. And kind of growing up, our family just kind of went our separate ways. I, I don't know a lot of history about my mom. She was in and out of the hospital a lot when, from the point I was about nine years old or on. And as I went on, got married, had kids. Later on, I was visiting my dad and uh, my stepmom. Went to the house and, and my uh, stepmom had said, hey, could you go clear out that old dresser in the garage and just get rid of everything? It's just, we gotta throw it out. And so I went in, opened up the drawers and there was like treasure. All these old pictures and artifacts. And on the third drawer down, as I pulled it out, and I emptied that entire drawer, put it in boxes, and now it's all in my garage. You know, it's like, clean their garage, put it in mine. But on the third drawer down, I found this book. And this book, right away I thought it was a leather Bible, and yet on the front it says, my five-year diary, a daily line. And I opened it up, and it had, uh, has these holes from termites in it, and for three years, uh, it, it's got a diary and a journal that was written in. And in the beginning, I, I, I read the beginning, and it, it's my mother that I never knew this existed. And so I started to read this. And it's so beautiful because I learned there of her faith in God, her love for Jesus. It was there. No one had told me. I didn't know. She prayed. She had this beautiful relationship with her daddy. He, they would always go on daddy dates was there, I learned she was a little boy crazy, uh, kind of interesting. And she wrote in this from when she was 16 years old till she was 18. To me, this is a treasure. And every now and then I'll pick it up and it's there. I, I learned of her heart. I learned her history. I learned what she believed. And when I took it home that night and I stuck it on my bedside, I realized that in a sense that's what this is. Your daddy wants you to know him wants you to know his heart. He wants you to know the history. He wants you to know the, the, the beliefs that, would, uh, that are so dear that he hopes that we would find and understand his heart. And when we read Psalm 19, Psalm 19 is literally like a preamble. It's like those of you that do like graduate research, you'll have a research article that has an abstract. An abstract summarizes the article. Well, Psalm 19 is like a preamble. It summarizes the whole theme of Scripture and God's revealing himself to us. Uh, look with me in verses 1 through 6. I'll read to you. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Uh, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard, their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like the strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circle, uh, circuit to the other end there is nothing hidden from its heat. You see here as God is revealing through creation his mighty wonders. As you look at your study guide that we've given you, uh, right at the beginning, God's world, Psalm 19, 1 through 6. We call this general revelation. Through creation, 
through conscience. We can learn about God. You don't necessarily from creation know him personally, what his name is, but we can learn. He's a God of power, a God of wonder. We can learn about his characteristics, his attributes. Uh, turn with me to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 1. The book of Romans, chapter 1, dealing with general revelation. God revealing himself. In chapter 1 of Romans, verse 20, listed on your study guide. But I'm going to start in verse 18. It's right after the book of Acts. In chapter 1, Paul writes, he says, People suppress the truth and unrighteousness, verse 19, because they... What may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. He, he's shown these things to us. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. And their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be wise. They became fool, fools. Chapter 1, he says that through creation, God's attributes are clearly seen. We're without excuse. Chapter 2, he talks about conscience, that God reveals himself through conscience. My granddaughter, she's uh, five years old now, and a couple years ago. You know, as, as a parent, there's these milestones that you want your children to have these experience, that first trip to Disneyland. You know, I remember my first trip, I took my oldest daughter, first time to Disneyland, I got the flu. And uh, it just wasn't how I thought it was supposed to turn out, you know. Well, one of the things, I grew up in Hermosa Beach, just up the coast a bit, and kind of grew up in the beach culture, surfing, volleyball, and all of that. And my grandmother taught my dad, who taught me a lot of things about the beach that most people don't know, don't see. When you walk down the beach, you see seaweed, and it's just there. Well, I've learned that when I was a kid, my dad would open up the root balls of kelp. And if you open up the root balls, um, and they're still fresh, usually in September, they're all washed up here in San Diego, you tear them open, and inside is all this marine life. And we would get little buckets, sand buckets, fill them with water, and we'd pull out the starfish, brittle stars, and little baby shrimp, and all these critters, baby uh, sea anemones that live in there. And we'd make these little aquariums at the beach. And so as I, you know, I taught that to my children, whenever we go to the beach, we'd do that and make aquariums. Well, my granddaughter, she was there at the beach, and I thought, oh, it's time to show her the wonders of God's creation. And so I take her down. We go, and there was a kelp ball there. I open it up, had the bucket, and sure enough, full of all these brittle stars, little baby lobster in there, all these things. I'm making this aquarium, and all these children from all around the beach come running up, and they see this crowd, and they're, ooh, and ah, and all of this. Well, afterwards, I'm, we're leaving there, and my granddaughter's going, can we go, Bapa? Can we go, Bapa? And I was kind of like, no, don't you see? This is, like, really exciting for me, you know? I was hoping she'd be excited about it. And so we leave there, and all the other kids are looking in this, and as we walk away, I go, so Kennedy, wasn't that really exciting? And she says this, not so much. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I look forward to this day, you know. And you get the sense sometimes as God, his heart, you know, he's given us so much. He's declaring, here I am. The wonder of the order and the majesty and the power of all his creation. And then sometimes we just, ah, not so much. Not so much. Not a big deal. What else do you have to show me? I'm going to put on the screen. Here we are in the Rock Auditorium on the planet Earth right now here in Point Loma. You have there on the Earth, we're in San Diego, this huge planet in relationship to, you know, Venus and Mars and Mercury now, there we are on the earth, but if you back up a little bit and put earth in relationship to Jupiter and Saturn and some of the other planets, there we are, little earth. There you are in San Diego, Point Loma, on that little planet there, earth, in relationship to Jupiter. But then we back out a little further and put Jupiter in relationship to our sun, 93 miles away, million miles away. There's Jupiter, and that little dot there... There we are sitting in the auditorium in Point Loma on that little speck in the sky. But then we back up and put our sun in relationship to Arcturus. 
You can't even find earth. Our sun is like a little tiny dot, a golf ball in relationship to Arcturus. But let's back out a little further and see Arcturus, that little ball, comparison to Antares, and the sun you can't even find. The speck of the sun in relationship. And the scriptures say that God flung the stars out of his fingertips. And sometimes we think how great we are, how important we are. And sometimes we shake our fist at God or we say, God, what are you doing? Why? I had a, a person, one of our Sunday school teachers, come up to me and she said, I had this dream last night. She said it was so real. True story comes up and says, I, I was approaching the throne of God. And in the scriptures it says, every one of us, all humanity will someday walk to the throne of God and God will separate all humanity to those who trusted in him in faith and those that denied his revelation, live for themselves. And it calls it the sheep and the goats. And she said, I was approaching the throne of God and there was God. It was, you know, I couldn't see his face. And as I'm approaching the th throne, I realized all humanity was splitting for the judgment. And I didn't know which way to go, to the right or to the left. And she was panicking in her dream. She said, I woke up. I opened, turned on the light, opened up my Bible and found in Matthew 25, she said. That Matthew 25, he divides the sheep and the goat to the right hand. And so she went back to sleep. The Lord took her right back to that same dream. And she's approaching the throne of God, and all humanity is starting to separate. And she realizes, okay, the right. And then she thought, my right or his right, you know? <laughs> she, she started to panic and just cried out while she's sleeping and said, Jesus, Jesus. You know, all of us someday are going to stand in that position. And let me encourage you, it's Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. But we're going to be held accountable, and all, as we've just read in Roman, are without excuse. God has manifest himself, but so sadly, people suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And they believe the lie. They believe the lie. You know, we have coming in here, it's in your bulletin, the exchange conference, Truth and Lie. And having uh, Mark Driscoll and Francis Chan. Francis Chan is uh, author and just great communicator. And just last night I saw one of his messages and he's illustrating the, the reality of how a lot of us live life. Not so much. Not so much, God. And he has this balance beam there and he gets on top of the balance beam and he's trying to communicate how we are. And he says many Christians, rather than standing and really doing their best, they're, they want to be comfortable. And he gets down and hugs the balance beam. And as he's talking, he says, we're, we go through life just hanging on. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll give a little and, yeah, I'll sing a little and stuff, but I want to be comfortable. Don't make me do anything. And we go through life and, Lord, just let me, when I die, let me die in my sleep, you know, and, and all the thing. And he, he illustrates this. He's on the balance beam. And then at the end of our life, and he, he gets off the balance beam and then goes, there, I did it, God, you know, as we stand in front of, uh, uh, the creator of the universe giving an account of our life and how we lived. I want to encourage you. God has made himself known. And he wants a relationship with us, not out of obligation, not out of duty, but this living and abiding communion that he communicates with us. Our, you have in the back that our pastor is putting together on the back of your study guide a devotion that each day there's a reading and to encourage us, don't just read, but read and then reflect. And then what do we do about it? How do we respond? And in our small groups here at the Rock Church, I want to encourage you, each week, as you meet in your small groups, if you're not connected yet, go online and, and get information about getting in a small group. Because we get together, we talk about mild sermons. There's some dialogue, and then we reflect on some of our readings. What is God showing you? What did you see? What, what did you reflect of what God was doing then in the Scripture at that time in history? What does that apply to us today? And then what are we supposed to do about it? And we respond to the revelation of God, and we do things. You know, there are, I, I can only say, I love this church. 
I love you. I, I love all that God is doing through you, the difference that you're making in our community. Wherever I go, I'm hearing about you doing things in our community and the testimony. And when I work with the fire department, a police department, they share, oh, the Rock Church. Uh, oh, you, you guys did this and doing that. And your witness is just amazing. And all that God has given us. You know, we have Impact 195 where you can go and get trained up to just grow in leaps and bounds in your relationship with the Lord, to invest a season of your life uh, for the Lord. We, we have the married couples retreat. It's not just a, oh, it's just a retreat. No, it's for you to invest in your marriage. Many of us, you know, you're going through life and your relationships, and it's just not connecting, clicking. You're just arguing all the time. It's like, you're, like Einstein said, you just go around and around doing the same things over and over, expecting different results. And yet the Lord's got his arms out saying, no, come, let me instruct you. Let me invest in you. You know, we're launching Rock North County. You know, I got a subtle advertisement here on June 13th, Rock North County. Do you realize it's not about saving drive time? It's the Lord wants to use you and multiply up to another part of the region that we can start impacting that community with the love of Jesus Christ. Then we're going to go East County, South County. We're going to New York. I mean, the Lord wants our lives to grab hold of him. But I get the sense that some of us come week after week, you're attenders, maybe even pretenders, but God wants contenders. And he's revealing himself. He's speaking to us in dynamic ways in the days that we're living in. And the earthquakes. I was just doing a seminar for trauma and disaster in El Centro. Last year I, I did one and they are getting rocked by all these earthquakes. And then the night... I was there, there were three earthquakes. And it's like God's getting our attention, but what are we doing? And many of us, we got the devotion, we have our, oh, small groups, not so much. Oh, the Bible, not so much. I'm busy. People died for this book that you and I can have it. And we just somehow lose the sense of the sacredness of what God has given us. And you can know the living God. Not... Not just know about him, but let's read on here in verse 7. We can know him personally. Listen to what he says. The law, verse 7. God's world, verses 1 through 6, God's word. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, Commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. We have contained here, the promises of God. On your study guide, special revelation through God's word and his son. Through God's word and his son, we can actually know him personally. Can actually know. The scripture there, Romans in chapter 10, verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Just by reading, your faith will be enlarged. God reveals himself through his son, a special revelation where you can not just know about him, but know him personally. In Hebrews, I'll read to you, chapter 1, it says, God who at various times in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, but in these last days has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed, appointed heir of all things. The God of the universe is making himself known, dynamic way. I have a friend who's a firefighter, paramedic, met him years ago, and he came in for counseling once, and we were talking, and not a believer, and had a lot of questions and issues on relationship, and we, we talked, we met, and then I asked him at the end, I just said, how come you don't believe? And he said, I got a science background, I love the sciences, and he said, frankly, I, I believe in evolution, I don't believe in creation. I said, really, really? 
well, I have some books I'd love for you to read. We can talk and discuss about intelligent design and the statistical, looking at the true fossil record and all of this information. So gave him some books. He started reading. And after a number of months, we got back together, and I said, so what do you, what do you think? He says, well, I spent a lot of time in thinking, rethinking my theories, and uh, by the evidence and all that I've gone, he went out to the Creation Institute uh, Museum out there, met with people, asked questions. He says, I've come to the conclusion there is a God. I'm intellectually convinced that God exists. I mean, the evidence is overwhelming, he said. And so I said, you, you ready to receive Jesus Christ? You need to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and ask God to take charge and repent of your sins. He goes, I'm not there yet. He says, in reality, I, I like my sin. I said, well, that, that's scary to know there's a God, there's an accountability, and he said, I'm just not there yet. Well, I lost touch. He moved out of the area, took a paramedic job up in Oakland. While up in Oakland, you know, he'd been serving up there, a couple of years later, he comes back to San Diego, ran into him at church, and I see him. I go, hey, Mike, what are you doing? He goes, I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I go, praise the Lord. What? Tell me your story. He said, kind of weird, he said, I was on a call up in Oakland. It was about 2 in the morning. Bars were being closed. This drunk got kicked out of a bar, beat up, bludgeoned. We arrive on scene. Someone called 911. There he is, all beat up, bloody, and we pack him up in the ambulance. We're taking him, transporting him to the hospital. And all of a sudden, he's laying on the gurney, and he lifts his head up, and he says, if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. <laughs> he said, no, I'm not exaggerating. He goes, I'm there looking at this guy, and I'm like, what has he done for you? And he said this, he says, I am an example of what happens when someone lives in rebellion to God. He said, right then, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart, and I realized that's me. That's my future. And I prayed with him to receive the Lord. And he tells me this. I was like, that is so wrong. I gave you books. I answered your questions. <laughs> and this beat up drunk, backslidden. You know, God's ways aren't our ways, are they? God's thoughts aren't our thoughts. You know, it was Augustine, Augustine, way back, 386 A.D. Brilliant mind scholar, partier, uh, drunk, all the time, and he reached this point, and he was reading, way back, reading a story, a testimony of a devout Christian in his life, how he was living and literally was tortured for his faith. And he said, I was so convicted. Augustine, he writes his story. And at the end, he, as he was reflecting on this, brought to tears over his life, he heard children on the other side of the wall singing this rhyme saying, tole lege, tole lege, which means take up and read, take up and read. And he happened in his library to have some of Paul's writings. And out of Romans chapter 13, he just pulled it out, started to read, and he, he read this. It said, let us walk properly in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, in strife and envy. It was as if God was speaking right to his heart. It says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts said, right then in tears, I ask God to forgive me of my sins. Tole lege, tole lege. Take up and read, take up and read. Let me encourage you. You have the words of eternal life. God is calling us as a church through our pastor to start getting serious about God's revelation, God's word. God is revealing his thought, his heart, his thoughts, his heart, his plan, and he wants to transform our lives. If you look at the bottom of your study guide, the scripture there, Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it uh, day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. Psalm 1 talks about blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I know it's our pastor's heart. I know it's God's heart. He wants to prosper. Not 
make you all rich, but prosper in your heart, prosper in your relationships, prosper in who you are as a person, living with a purpose, fulfilling God's design. And God is saying, I'm here. Come to me, all you that labor are heavy laden. I want to give you rest. Oh, not so much. I got things to do, people to meet, got entertainment to enjoy, and we put God on the side, and it's this brokenhearted Heavenly Father who's trying to show him, show us how much he loves us and what he can do with our lives if we would just surrender. I want to close, as you have in your study guide there, it says read, reflect, respond. You're going to do this this week in your devotion. And we're going to close the service and actually respond to God in worship. I'm going to ask you not to rush out, not to get on to the next appointment. Uh, Though You're going to go to the bookstore, get your program, and go to Vons and get some canned goods and all of that. But we're going to respond in worship to the Lord. But I want to see, show you how, how God's Word works here. In verse 7 where it says, the law of the Lord is perfect. We read God's Word and His Word is perfect. And then... He gives us the response. This is what happened. It converts the soul. Uh, that, as we reflect, his word is perfect. It converts the soul. Now, if you know God's word converts the soul, what would you do? How would you respond to that? Write in the blank there. How would you personally respond to God's word if you know that it converts people's lives? I wrote evangelize. God's word is perfect. It converts people. Then my response is to share the love of Jesus Christ with people. And the second part of that verse, the testimony of the Lord is sure. And the word sure it means faithful. It, it's faithful. Making wise the simple. Wow. I can read. It. His word is sure. As I reflect, it's given to me. It makes people wise How would you respond to that? Knowing that Scripture will make you wise. What would you write in? Write in. How how would you respond to that? For me, I need to study. Study God's Word. As you read through, and, and God's constantly revealing, this is what it means. Now, what do you do about it? I have there the third, the statutes of the Lord are right. It rejoices the heart. Let's celebrate Celebrate. Respond by celebrating and enjoying the goodness of God. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It enlightens. It illuminates a life. Given that, I I respond. I'm going to take time to ponder, to meditate upon God's word. The fear of the Lord is clean. It's unmixed. It endures forever. How would you respond to the fear of the Lord uh, and, and that it cleanses And knowing it endures, repent of our sins. Now again, your response might be different. The judgments of the Lord are true, righteous altogether. Believe, believe. God wants us to believe. Down in verse 11 where it says, Moreover, by them is your servant warned, uh, your servant warned, in keeping of them is great reward. Knowing of the great reward... I would seek to be obedient, the obedience to God's word. Now, as we close, I, I, I just want to encourage you. God has given us so much here at The Rock, an amazing pastor who I, I, I've known him for 26 years, and this church isn't about miles. It's about Jesus Christ, but I, I know it's a man after God's heart. He walks the talk, a man of integrity, but a man of passion, and here's his passion. He wants for all of us to grab the significance of God's heart, to take up God's word and read and watch him transform our lives. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Don't rush out. Ask for Ricardo to come back out. And all through Scripture, when God reveals himself, God's people respond in worship. All through Scripture, you'll see people declaring the wonderful glory of God. Now, after the service... If you have any special needs, there's struggles, there's issues going on in your life, uh, I'm going to ask for our leaders. They're going to be up here to pray with you, to anoint you with oil if you have illness, 
a family member that's struggling, our pastoral team is here to love you, to love upon you, uh, and encourage you to take advantage of this. We had a great time of prayer this week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But let's respond to the revelation of God and worship Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Thank you. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Would you lift your voice and say, how great, oh, is our God. Sing with me how great. Our God, and go see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You're the name above all names. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of. Bless you one Lord Sing it one more time You're the name above all names You're the name Comfortable, just lift your hands and sing. How great, how great! Oh, sing with me, sing with me. for anything at all. There's a prayer team that's going to be up front. If you feel comfortable coming up here and receiving prayer while your church worships, that's okay to do. Sing with me. Sing with me how sorry our God and oh we see how great how great is our God then sings my soul then sing my soul, my Savior God, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou, how great Thou, then sings my soul, then sing my soul, yes it
sing with me how celebrate your goodness and your mercy over us to us and through us we love you god and may there be no mistake who gets all the glory honor and praise for our life it's our lord and savior jesus christ and all god's people said come on clap for jesus you are dismissed in the sight of god we love you guys god bless you have a great sunday